Joining us now with more is Brad Jacob from the Regent University of Law, Regent University Law School. He studied under Justice Scalia at University of Chicago Law School. Mr. Jacob, what can you tell us about Justice Scalia as a person and a professor? Well, he was a fine man. Uh, he was a very faithful Catholic, uh, a family man, nine children, um, and just a very jovial, uh, funny guy. Always liked both in the classroom and on the court. Always liked the the joke. Uh, I I have uh, memories of being in the Supreme Court for oral arguments, and Nino would would try to crack up the crowd with some kind of a deadpan one-liner. And Chief Justice Rehnquist was very much a order guy, and he would pound his gavel and glare at him, but uh, they're great, great fun. He was a good man, good man. How does his influence still affect you today? Well, I, probably no one has affected my teaching as a law professor, both in substance and in style, than, than Antonin Scalia. Um, he was the best teacher I ever had in my life. Uh, not all brilliant people are good teachers, but, but he was. And so not only do I agree with his approach to the Constitution, uh, but I've so much enjoyed the way he tried to make the classroom a, a fun experience that I've tried to model that myself. Now, Justice Scalia is being hailed as a conservative intellectual giant. How did he affect the direction of the Supreme Court and the nation? You know, it, it, uh, whether that's a true characterization depends a lot on what conservative means. Because not all of his great opinions were conservative opinions. He was more of a liberal, as, as we usually use the word, on things like uh, criminal justice, protections for, uh, uh, for accused, for people in, in criminal situations. He joined the majority to strike down uh, a law against burning the flag as free speech. What was key was not whether he was conservative or liberal. What was key was his approach which is to say, let's look at what the Constitution of the United States actually says. Instead of justices making up these three-part tests and four-part tests, Roe versus Wade with its infamous trimesters, you can do this in this trimester, none of which is in the Constitution. Scalia significantly moved at the Supreme Court in the direction of saying, our job is to look at the words and the history of this document and do what it says instead of what we want. How will his absence from the court affect upcoming cases like the Obamacare contraception mandate? Well, there's no way to know for sure, because none of us knew for sure what was going to happen in any of these cases. But we've now got an eight-justice court, and even numbers are always bad because they leave open the possibility of a tie. Uh, so in any case where Scalia would have been the fifth vote, we now presumably have four to four ties. When the court splits four to four, it's as if they never heard the case. The, the ruling in the lower court, which is typically a court of appeals, is affirmed, but there's no precedent that applies anywhere else in the country. It's just that case, that case ends and the lower ruling stands. So there may be a bunch of those. There may be cases that, that don't get a definitive resolution. I wouldn't even be surprised if uh, Chief Justice Roberts tries to drop some of the big cases and not decide them at all until he gets back to a full complement of nine justices. How could this upcoming battle over Scalia's replacement affect the presidential election? Well, this has now become a hot potato for everybody. You know, the president has said he's going to put someone on the court. Uh, several key senators and the Republican presidential candidates uh, are all saying that, that this should wait a year until we have a new president and let that person uh, uh, appoint the next justice. The president can certainly nominate someone, and I expect he will. The Senate, I believe the Senate has a duty to act, although many people believe the Senate can simply stall for a year. I think they have a constitutional duty to act, but they can always vote down. If the president sends them a nominee and they say, no, we don't want this person, we, we vote no. And so it's, it's going to be a huge issue for everybody. Both parties are going to be trying to make as much hay out of this as they can and hopefully get a justice that they are comfortable with. All right. Mr. Jacob, thanks for being with us.